and laugh that our courage take this much To have and to hold, continue to climb The hundreds more just like us Now I know I left us hanging a little bit um, with the game series that is not yet finished and I, I know you're waiting with rapt anticipation on the edge of your seat waiting to see where I'm going with shuffling go pieces around a piece of paper and talking about quantification defunct political theories and the problems of pattern um, but uh, recent events have drawn my attention to <clears throat> an important question sort of which that I usually wait to address until I have covered um, to my satisfaction some of the background reasoning. Um, I'm a big fan of walking people through the steps to where I wound up, um, showing you how I got to where I got. Um, if only because I think that often those steps may to you prove more useful than my actual conclusions. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I'm as um, pedantic or uh, if you're feeling more complimentary methodical um, in the presentation of my arguments because I generally think that you will likely find um, more value at least for you in your applications and your um, attempts to understand yourself your world and the relationship therein uh, that you'll find um, more of value in um, some useful tools than um, a series of conclusions. That being said, I'm going to break that rule for uh, a moment here and talk about something else. Um, let's talk a little bit about morality or ethics, particular to communication. Um, now, in communication, I'm, I'm not narrowing this down. Um, this would include um, casual conversation. This would include um, intense uh, dialogue. Um, this, would, uh, this would also include even, even those private shared moments with a person where words are both inadequate and unnecessary um, because I do believe that even there there is communication. Um, this would include uh, our artistic expressions, um, music as I've talked about a little bit earlier, um, literature, our YouTube videos, um, visual art, that sort of thing. Any, any means um, any means of description, expression, communication, um, wherein we take information and put it out. Not necessarily into the hands, directly into the hands of another person, but just put it out. Now, we'll talk a little bit about um, some of the underlying logistics, um, my usual predicate rhetoric, but for the time being, we're going to concern ourselves exclusively with some of the ethical questions. In particular, I'd like to talk a little bit about the word offensive, about the word injurious, and that latter one I'm going to spend a little bit more time on. What exactly does it mean to be offensive? What does it mean to be offended? These things are difficult to describe in any sort of absolute terms, but that's by no means unique to this problem or this question. In most situations where we're trying to describe some kind of internal state or internal reaction, we tend to find that language breaks down very quickly. Um, we have to rely in our communication to a great degree on empathic responses and sympathetic contextualization on the part of the listener. Now, I, I am playing the taxonomy game here, so if you find that you object to my definitions, 
that's all well and good. That's fine. And I'm not going to take issue with the way in which you use these words in philosophy or casual conversation. Um, but just for the sake of clarity, when I am talking about empathy and sympathy, when I speak of sympathy, I mean very specifically that sequence of abstractions wherein we correlate our recalled experience of an event, of a state, of a context, and recognize that some corollary exists between events, context, so on and so forth, that we can recall and those of the person with which we are concerned. And through, again, a very abstract process. I'm describing this in terms that seem very artificial. I think largely because I think sympathy is, to some degree, artificial. Um, it is, um, in some ways, an act of make-believe, where you pretend that these corollaries um, give you some insight into the personal state of the person that you are regarding. Um, this is necessary. We do this all the time, and again, human interaction relies, to some degree, on us being able to make these sympathetic deductions. Empathy, on the other hand, we cannot describe in such terms. An empathic or empathetic experience, and honestly I prefer the former term, is one wherein we cannot explain the mechanisms wherein we gain insight into the inner state of another person. And even at times we require some after-the-fact processing to recognize that what we were experiencing was, in point of fact, related to the state of another person and not ourselves. Now, these can be very difficult to describe, as already evident, um, and lines between these are very difficult to draw. In particular, um, when we start running into problems of empathetic or empathic response and our own response to the emotional state of a person. For example, we see that someone is angry, we perceive that that anger is the result of some injustice inflicted upon this person, and our own response to that injustice is also anger. Now, this is not a truly empathic response. But we can make a clear distinction between sympathy and empathy, in that a sympathetic response is one that we choose. We instantiate it. It requires some action on our part to come into being. On the other hand, an empathic response does not happen as the result of our choosing, often contrary to our choosing. A sympathetic response is as easy to control as perhaps our inner monologue or some imagined narrative when we make up stories or scenarios in our mind, because it is similarly an act of imagination. An empathic response, on the other hand, responds to our attempts at control very similarly to our own emotional responses. And this is one of the ways in which a distinction between the two is very difficult to draw, between the empathic emotion and the emotion that originates entirely within us and is an emotive response to our own inner state. 